Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. Welcome, everybody, to the Michigan series. That's right. It's episode 24. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. We are here live. If you're listening via the podcast, you can always join us live 7 p.m. Eastern at facebook.com forward slash better on draft or twitch.tv forward slash bod podcast. Let's go around and see what everyone's drinking real quick. Uh, starting with myself, I got the Guinness NA. That's right. We are still sober uh, going on six plus months right now. Uh, we'll be back here soon in the saddle drinking some delicious beer including some from what our guest uh has given us but let's go and see who else we got wendy what are you drinking i have got a ferndale project chonk wheelie double neipa and subbing in for dan who's at a wedding is dan with an eye danny what do you got over there i also have ferndale project this is the affirmations neipa and Robert, what do you got? Uh, I'm just straight up three balling right now because uh, I got the Cherry Funfetti, the Affirmations, uh-huh. and just decided what the hell, might as well caffeinate. I got myself some Ash Coffee. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we got Nicholas over there. Welcome to the show. What are you drinking? I had to hurry up and get my beer, and I haven't had a chance to go downstairs to get the other stuff, so... Whatever was in the fridge upstairs, because, you know, you've got to have two kitchens now when, you're, when you have a kid. I got Wax Wings Triple Projection IPA. All right. Well, we have some guests in our uh, virtual studio tonight. Uh, we're going to start with uh, we, we awarded two of them uh, being a three time guest, starting with Eric, who is here for his third time. Uh, why don't you uh, say hello and tell us what it is you do now? Hello. Yeah. Uh, my name is Eric Plata, and I'm the director of brewing operations for Eastern Market Brewing Company and Ferndale Projects. And I am drinking a Mas Cerveza from Eastern Market in collaboration with Ferndale Projects. So. And it's tasting great out of this really cool cup I have. <laughs> Beautiful plug. If you raise it a little higher, the people can uh, see it too. Uh, we have, uh, one of the owners of Ferndale project and Easter market brewing Dane, Dane, it's been a minute. How are you? What are you drinking? I'm doing good. Um, it has been a minute. I am drinking the with her, uh, hazy IPA that was, uh, released today. Officially Rex is actually at Eastern market market right now, hidden in the back room um where the release is happening um and i'm actually just drinking a a low fill of it it's great well you kind of brought him in we have uh, a gentleman here this is his first time rex welcome to the show what do you do and what are you drinking yes hello everybody Uh, thanks for allowing me to be here uh i am drinking our detroit pistons collaboration so uh, 313 ipa um ipa with all michigan hops and it's delicious Cool can too. And uh black on black can. I mean, that that's a good look. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us. The first question, I know we want to get a lot into Ferndale project, uh, but because a lot of people have joined me in the journey and understanding that I've been sober for the last six months, you guys actually brewed a sober beer recently, which was a Goza. Explain to me why you guys got into that project and um, the whole point of why you brewed it, and are we going to see any other types of NA beers coming in? So I don't know who wants to take it, but you guys decide and go. Yeah, I can start. Um, we've always kind of had our eye on the NA market. Um, there's a lot of chatter about it, um, and we 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 heard about this machine that comes from a company called ABV in Minneapolis. Um, it basically you take a, a beer. You put it in the machine and it spits out uh, an NA version of that beer and it sucks all the alcohol out and you get a seltzer, which sounds too good to be true. Um, So we took a bunch of our beers uh, in a vehicle and drove to Minneapolis and ran them through the machine. And it was too good to be true. Um, So we're working with this with this company. Um, We installed their equipment at our our Royal Oak facility 
um, and have been testing different beers on it. So the first one that we have uh, launched right now is draft only is a, a grapefruit and a Gosa. Um, and the thing that we found uh, is that the sours are tasting really, really good. The NA versions um, the, the non sours taste good too, but you always kind of expect the beer that's going in so that and elephant juice and a, um, was okay. Um, but when you compare it to elephant juice, it just wasn't quite as good, but we weren't, we were finding with the sours that they, they almost held up. And so we're excited to be launching later this year, just a line of NA gosas with their, um, different fruited flavors. We're going to keep experimenting, going draft only. Um, and one thing that we want to think about is shelf stability, uh, since there is no alcohol in them. Um, so we're really focused on that before we move into package, but the hope is by the end of the year, we're going to be releasing some package as well. And before I pass it off to uh, another host to start asking some more questions, kind of give us, cause it's been a couple years since you guys have been on the show uh, prior to Ferndale project opening. Um, it was still Axel brewing at that time. Uh, you guys purchased another building in Royal Oak. Uh, why don't you, you kind of give us a timeline of what's happened maybe in the last, let's say three years. Like what, what is, I know it's a lot. So just, you know, the, the high end, the high end uh, cliff notes, the spark notes. <laughs> Where do we start? Um, it's funny. I just uh, ran into a, a friend uh, that I hadn't seen or spoken to in six years. Um, we just kind of lost touch. And um, I had my old phone and when I back when I had a day job, which I think I had probably the first time I was on the podcast. When I left, they took my phone. I had to get a new phone. He couldn't get a hold of me. He just moved to Ann Arbor. And the last time I sat with him, uh, I had told him that we were thinking about starting a brewery in my barn on my property. And literally he knew he doesn't have social media. He knew nothing since. Uh, so I just went through this story with him over coffee and it was ended up being a very long coffee. Um, but for the last three years, I mean, the big thing that happened is uh, we opened Ferndale Project. And then as we're all aware, the pandemic hit. Um, so we had to get really creative. Um, we tripled our team when we opened Ferndale project, we went from about 15 employees to about 45 employees, um, had a, a really awesome opening. Um, then the pandemic hit and had to immediately close everything down. Um, so we had to get creative just to survive the pandemic, ended up launching a bunch of kind of side ventures and some of them stuck. Um, probably the most, uh, important one for us and just the stability and health of our business was peddler which allowed us to deliver beer um, to people's homes and that really carried us through the pandemic um yeah and it, it was cool to hear kind of people's reactions like it brought a little bit of a joy during a, a very tough time um and so that was the big one that happened in the pandemic um and it got to the point where we were operating all of these these businesses and ventures out of um the ferndale location and there just wasn't room for it and the place was a mess um, so we started to look for other locations where we could really just had a warehousing space. Um, and um, uh, around that time, uh, Roke announced that they were leaving their Royal Oak, 16,000 square foot warehouse right in the middle of um, Royal Oak downtown. Um, and so we, we jumped on it. And the plan honestly wasn't to brew there. Um, it was just the space. But it happened to be custom built for a brewery. Um, their equipment went up on auction. And here we are. <laughs> we have our third brew third brewery where we're, we're actively brewing. Um, and, um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a crazy venture. Now on to me. Hi, Dane. Been a minute. Hey. <laughs> this is my, my, my partner here. Uh, a couple of things. I actually, I want to start with that NA Goza. And I will say that that is for me, one of the most like, tasting like alcohol without having alcohol goes as I've ever had. I, and until you guys started ma making goes as I just did not like sour beers, but the way that you guys make sour beers and turn things down uh, that don't go to 11, like speciation or arc light, that it is, it is amazing how you guys do that. It's so that, that any goes, I continually will go back to that. Uh, but one thing I actually wanted to ask about uh, is starting with this cherry funfetti. Um, I guess somebody give me a, a breakdown of, of what I'm getting here, because this thing, it, it pretty much just like what the can and, and its design is showing me that it's basically tasting like a damn cherry cake. <laughs> <laughs> 
Rex, you want to give it a go? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I can just break down the beer pretty, pretty simple. Uh, we like to do like fun experimental sours at Ferndale Project. And this one was kind of like no exception. Uh, I think it was more for our like, is it second or third birthday, Dane? I don't know, like time flies. <laughs> it's our second, but it feels like our yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of like, you know, we wanted to do like some sort of like cake birthday theme, whatever. Uh, but uh, nothing too crazy about it. Standard kettle sour. Um, some cherry, some fun cake batter, some, you know, some vanilla, just, just allowing us to just kind of be like crazy and, you know, make something enjoyable to drink that, like what you said, it's just like, you know, like it drinks exactly like it says. <laughs> yeah, indeed. That, that's what it does for sure. Um, one thing, actually, a couple things I wanted to ask about, obviously, with the remodel of Ferndale Project. Um, obviously, that was a, a pretty lengthy process and, and glad that you were able to finally get through with that. Um, but in some of the media outlets, uh, and I, I've seen it in some of the postings and talking to some of the people who, were, who uh, were there when everything reopened, was that you wanted to call this a grand opening as opposed to a reopening. Uh, obviously, with I, I think I get it in that we basically have had Ferndale Project for the entirety of a pandemic, and it's not necessarily an opening when all you've had to do is just kind of be closed and just sell beer out of the door and have everybody outside. But I guess from, from your perspective, talk to us about what it means for this to be more of a grand opening as opposed to just reopening the doors. Yeah. Um, I mean, it kind of goes back to the, the beginning where um, we – put all our resources together just to move into that space and come to a deal with Axel. Um, it's not often that a smaller brewery um, um, buyers a larger brewery, um, but in Eastern market, we had a five barrel brew house there. We had a 10 barrel brew house and we realized we, we needed that scale um, to be more efficient. Um, so we really put everything into the deal. And when we opened, we left the space exactly as it was. Um, and Axel really operated more like a restaurant that made beer and we were very much beer first. Um, and so the space didn't really fit the way that we operated and it didn't really have an identity um, for every, for a lot of people that were in the neighborhood. It still was Axel or Livernoy tap. Um, but to be fair, we didn't really know who we were back then. Um, and so over the last two years, we've really d defined who we are, the styles of beer that, that we make um, and um, and how we want the space to operate. And it, it really is a space for that neighborhood on Livernoy where we have the cafe, we have the restaurant. We talk about it a lot in our marketing. There was a time where we focused a lot on our cans, our releases, but just today we, we uh, posted a picture of a NA seltzer that uh, our cafe manager is making crazy for it. Um, and it's, it shows that people really like the beer, but they also kind of like all the other facets of, what Ferndale Project is. So being able to have two years to figure out who we were and then reo reopen um, with that identity in place gave us a chance to really kind of just, just figure it out and things just operate much smoother. Um, we've got the walk-up window, we have a bodega where there's cans to go. Um, so being able to kind of work through who we are and reopen with that vision was big for us. I wish that we could have done that from day one. Um, and it would be easy to say if we had the financial resources at the time, we would have, but I don't think we knew who we were at that time to be able to, even if we did have the financial resources to do it. All right. And I guess a, a quick shout out to, uh, to five eights. They're the design company or design studio that helped create the space. I'm curious from, from your perspective, looking at the design, uh, did it check all of the boxes for everything that you wanted? Was there something that like got <laughs> left out that you wish you got to be in there? <laughs> Um, I would say, well, uh, shout out to Danny Jacobs on our team. He's our creative director. Mm -hmm. His team do all of our labels. So we do everything in house. I will really say that I stepped away from design. Um, it's one of those situations where, you know, there's somebody who's much better than you and you let them run with it. Um, to be honest, I didn't love the renderings. Um, but I was like, Danny knows what he's doing. Five eights know what they're doing. Um, funct functionality is there. And it's one of those scenarios where you see renderings. Usually the renderings come out and you're like, this is incredible. 
Um, and then it doesn't always quite live up to the renderings. And we almost have, I feel like the opposite effect where the, the space when you walk in is better than I could have the renderings in terms of what's not there. Well, one thing's not finished. We're going to have um, uh, what we're calling the kids zone in the corner. It's not quite done, but there's going to be a little area with AstroTurf on the bottom. Um, it's got a, a wall around it um, and features um, for, and we're going to have some shelves and, and kids games, magnet tiles, all that for people to hang out with, for, for kids to hang out while their parents are enjoying a beer or who knows, maybe get some parents in there playing with the magnet tiles. Um, and then that will hopefully be done in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then the other, there's some things that on the um, external side of the building we want to do, just the weather's not quite there. So we, we will repaint the building. Um, one thing that was we haven't done, and I don't know if there's a time frame, but I'd like to get some awnings outside and some sun shades. Um, we're very lucky to have the patio that we do have. It really helped us get through the pandemic because we could have outdoor seating. Um, it does get hot, and when it rains, um, there's no there's no cover. So that's something that we hope to add at some point in the future. Yeah, and I, I did bring my my 15 year old up there on Sunday. Uh, for it was pretty much brunch time. She wasn't very happy that it was too early for jumbo wings. So uh, definitely have to work <laughs> on that for the menu. Apparently, kids need jumbo wings at eleven o'clock in the morning. Uh, but I'm gonna tag uh, Ken. I'm gonna tag Ken back in. He's got something for you. Yeah, so I wanted to discuss real quick because Eric, who is the newest member of your team, is joining, and I want to kind of get a feel. Eric, what are you going to be bringing to the team, and what is uh, your upcoming goal for the next nine months? What can we expect out of you uh, joining the Easter Market Ferndale Project team? He's, you interviewing him for the job? He's already got the job. <laughs> well, Eric was so nonchalant. His first day is technically Monday. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I just moved in today. I, if you could see like past, like what I'm looking at over here, I'm surrounded by a sea of boxes. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's awesome. It's super exciting. Um, but to go to your question. Yeah. I mean, you know, one, one of the things I really want to start uh, implementing is uh, inventory and raw mat control. Uh, one thing that uh, Dane has kind of tasked me on was, or tasked me with rather is uh, to use some uh, programs like ECOS uh, amongst the collective uh, with, you know, just inventory control, pricings, uh, you know, just having general consistency across the board. Um, one thing I also want to start uh, kind of implementing are just kind of standard operation uh, standard operational procedures, uh, some SOPs for literally everything across the board, um, just to make it easier for everybody. If somebody has a question about, you know, CIPing a tank or SIPing or what our processes are for doing one thing, uh, that it's a, it's just kind of uh, consistent, uniform across the our employees. Um, and then just, you know, focusing and, and, and letting our guys do what they do best, which is uh, experimenting, uh, con consistently innovating, uh, pushing the envelope, uh, supporting local ingredients when we can, uh, supporting local uh, foundations and, and just the community uh, like they've been doing. Um, I think my role uh, really is just going to kind of be consistency to start uh, within the next nine months. Is that's going to be my general focus. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to pass it to Wendy. Um, I know she wants to talk about one of the beers that she's uh, drinking over there um, that you guys have made. Sorry, I'm still learning how to unmute my microphone, apparently. I mean, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I I mean we've the... only been at it for over two years now. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know, right? <laughs> so I have the Trunk Lily, and it is definitely juicy. Um, tell me a little bit about this one. Um, sure. Like I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, so that was one of our uh, bi-monthly, bi-monthly uh, beer releases that we had. I, I, I always forget it's like two weeks or a month ago, but um, due to the Ferndale model of being like experimental and just trying to do like new stuff, push the envelope. Um, we had two releases that release and Chonk Wheelie was one of them where we like found this Belgian strain of yeast that we liked and like we primarily focus on hoppy beer so we were like well let's you know let's kind of do like a, a hybrid of like this old school belgian but like throw some like new school methods to it and like for me like what i love about my job is that i can do stuff like that and like be creative and that beer is just like 
definitely has a lot going for it, but I think it's like super cool. Like you got this Belgian character from the East, but then you got like this nice hoppy melon, a little bit of spice. Like it's, it's definitely a complex beer, but in the glass, like it's like you, you just showed it, like it looks great. It tastes great. Like it was a fun beer. I'm, I'm happy about that one. The Belgian makes sense as to why I like it so much. <laughs> um, so what is the favorite beer that you're making right now? Oh, man. It's a, it's a tough question. Um, luckily, we've been able to uh, do some uh, like uh, some lager brews for Easter Market at the Ferndale Project location. So that's been fun. But every every two weeks, we have uh, like biweekly releases of new New England IPAs. And any new beer, regardless of what style it is, like I always approach it in a way to try to make the best beer possible. And it's just, it's just fun every two weeks. Um, I just love new beer. So um, I would say our next two releases are probably my two favorites. So, and it's just always going to keep that cycle. I thought for sure you were going to say opening day IPA. I mean, opening day IPA. Um, if I want to um, talk about Oh, go ahead. I'm all- what was that? If you want to talk about it? I mean, if we want to talk about cold IPA. Yeah, every once in a while, I know when the brewers are very excited about a beer because I'll constantly see them pulling pints off the tank. Um, and uh, one of the most recent one was opening day IPA. It's a cold IPA. Um, and these guys, I'm, I'm surprised if we got half of our yield with the amount of holes they had from the tank um but it is tasting very good Uh, that's exciting uh, and that that every two week schedule there um definitely gets me in there because at least every two weeks i'm ordering beer to be delivered to my house so well done with that Uh, my other question is what makes how do you decide where you're going to brew which beer yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it's really it's really based on uh, the size of the batch. Um, so we have a five barrel brew house in Eastern Market, um, and we have five, ten, and fifteen barrel tanks down there. Um, and then at Ferndale, we have ten and twenty barrel fermenters. Um, and and then Royal Oak has really kind of opened the door for us. Um, we have a thirty barrel brew house there um, and thirty barrel tanks. Um, so it kind of depends on what we're self-distributing. Elephant juice is still by far the beer we produce the most of. And so that really filled out the um, 20 barrel tanks uh, at Ferndale. And with Royal Oak going online and the 30 barrel tanks, we can move all of our elephant juice production over there, um, which has been great because it allows us to start to increase the size of our batches at Ferndale. Um, so all the Ferndale uh, releases are always brewed at Ferndale. Um, and then basically everything that we Distro for the most part comes out of um, Royal Oak, and it's it's great that we've gotten to the point now where at Eastern Market we're mostly just brewing for the tap room there. Um, so our brewer there, Clara, is amazing, and, and she also enjoys experimenting, and she really has the ability to just brew on that five and, and ten that, that five barrel brew house and, and brew for the tap list. So we can have a very diverse tap tap on an Eastern Market. Awesome. It's good to know that too, because we're always curious and we talk about it because we, sometimes we intermix the names of which beer came from which brewery. Yeah. So it's always, it's nice that we can kind of differentiate that now. Um, I think Danny had a question. Oh yeah. I accidentally put it in this chat. I'm so sorry. Um, (laughs) I, you know, I was at both openings of Ferndale Project, and it was very exciting to have you here. But I just have to know, um, is Salad Days ever coming back? Were you around when we brewed that, Rex? I was not, but I've heard the legend. <laughs> so good. Yeah, that was like one of our so first good. brews at Ferndale, right? Yeah, I think it was was perfect. I'll let them know. Uh, uh, There's definitely comments asking for it. Um, The cool thing is doing a release weeks. uh, We have the ability to slip it in. I don't remember what ops were in it. Uh, That was like 
Yeah, I think that was, I think that was on the open tap list, right? It was. And uh, like, we still, you know, it was April, March, 2020. We still have like old cans in the garage that we've never gotten around to recycling. And, and it just literally says salad days on it. Like that's all it is. Yeah. So, all right, Rex, talk anyway. to Mike. If ever I mean, comes back. We, um, Mike and I do eat salad for lunch every day and we make a joke about brewing that beer almost every week. <laughs> Time. It's not. <laughs> For those not watching on the video, you guys can check out a replay of the video if you're listening via the podcast over at Facebook or not Facebook, youtube.com forward slash better on draft. But somebody went behind Rex just recently, realized he was on camera and jolted <laughs> out of the frame. Um, but Dane, this is going to be more for you. As a lot of people are aware or may not be aware, um, Roke purchased Dark Horse and moved all of their production over into Marshall, Michigan, which left this giant building open and available. And you guys went ahead and uh, bought it, I believe. What is the plan? Is there, you know, I you kind of mentioned a potential third brewery on the way. Um, like what, what is the main, because that place is huge. That place was built for production. Um, yeah. Are you trying to get to that size of production sometime soon, or is that like a ten-year goal? Um, you know, explain to me what the the theory was purchasing that building. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we so we we lease it, we didn't purchase it, um, but um, it, we were able to move it, walk into a really nice, affordable lease um, because, and and a lot of credit to Roke. I mean, they built that brewery out to be a production brewery. Um, and so, um, we kind of walked in and, and had everything set up. Um, Roke has, Roke has changed the way that we have to think about production because, um, we've always brewed at capacity. Um, so when we are Eastern market with the five barrel brew house, I think we started with just like three, five barrel tanks. Um, and then once that wasn't enough, we added a 15 barrel and then we added two 10 barrels, um, and then, um, and then we were bringing it capacity there. And when we first opened back when 2000, well, we started talking 2016, but back then our plan was really just everything over the bar, no distro. Um, and so anything we had access, we started self-distributing. Um, and then we didn't have anything to self-distribute. So that's what led to us acquiring um, the axle space. And pretty quickly, even during the pandemic, we were bringing it capacity there. So we filled that place with as many additional tanks as we could fit. And then brewed at capacity. Um, and the cool thing about Royal Oak is that we have so much space. There's already drops that we can basically hit any production number that we want. We'll have to add tanks over time, but it gives us the ability to make more beer. Now, that being said, we we still do. Um, so I guess as an example, um, Roke had 120 and 90 barrel tanks. Um, all their equipment went on auction. We bought a lot of their equipment, but we didn't buy any of those tanks. Um, for us, we'd rather start with 30 barrel batches and then go into it. Um, so long story short, we have the ability uh, to increase our capacity to be probably a, a top five brewery in Michigan in terms of production, um, but we're not going to rush to that. Um, but it does open doors where we can think about batch size um, and increase. Um, we can move all our elephant juice production over there. Um, we can do 30 barrels of uh, 30 barrels of a beer like Punchki beer that uh, we do for Fat Tuesday and sells out. So that's been cool. Um, we will be opening a, a customer facing component, um, but um, we don't really have a date on that right now. Um, we haven't talked about this publicly, but uh, our focus is going to be back on Eastern Market now that Ferndale's remodeled, um, where we're looking to expanding that space um, for now. So we'll continue to use Roke as a production space. Um, but we're going to be doing a, a pretty major renovation on Easter market over the next year, year and a half, um, and then move to Royal Oak, which if anyone's watching that lives in Royal Oak, they're probably going to be pretty upset uh, hearing that. Um, but I think most people will be excited to hear that um, Easter market's going to um, be, um, be our, our emphasis. It's going to have a rooftop beer garden. It's going to have an event space. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. We'll say I have some suggestions. <laughs> i'd love to hear them we just got the first set of plans back and i've sent them to josh you know well 
um, and other folks out of the tap room saying, what do you guys think? <laughs> this was, I think I got them yesterday, Thursday. Yeah, yesterday. Ah. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to Nick. All right. So I'm going to start with an easy one. And I'm going to go into a, maybe a little bit more harder one. Um, I love collaborations with breweries. I love how they can bring people in groups together and people that we, you know, that we don't normally would expect. So I want to talk about the Detroit Pistons one, because that's the first time I've learned that, that, that someone's done something with, uh, well, any sports team that I can recall uh, in the Detroit area. But talk about how that one came to be, what inspired it to be a New England IPA, and who, obviously, the logo, I, I think, is one of the coolest logos that I've seen from sports in a very, very long time. So explain, talk about, yeah, there's, there's the can. If you, if, you can, if you can watch it on Facebook or on, on all the other state uh, mediums, there's the can. Dane just showed it. Talk about how that came to be and why a New England. You guys are going to love this. Um, it actually goes back to the first time we were on the podcast. Uh, Matt was throwing out beer names, um, and one of them was Same Old Lager. Um, and as you guys probably have talked about on the show, at some point we got into some trouble with the Lions. Um, and that is actually why we are partners with the Pistons. Um, so when, um, when that happened, um, we had to deal with that situation. And the Pistons reached out to us, and they said, hey – Sounds like the Lions are giving you some trouble. Would you be interested in partnering with us? Um, and uh, at the time, uh, Royal Oak wasn't even on our radar. So we didn't feel that we had the ability to produce at the scale that we could, that, that we could partner with someone like the Pistons. Um, so um, unfortunately, at, at the time, we had to turn it down. Um, but we kept in touch and kept a positive relationship um, with our friends over at the Pistons. And then when Royal Oak got announced and we finalized that, um, I reached back out and said, I think we actually have the ability to, um, to partner with you guys. Um, and that's when that relationship started. It was pretty late um, in last year. It was pretty close to when the season started. Um, so um, truthfully, our beer isn't uh, in the stadium as much as I would like it to be just because they had done a lot of their sets. Um, and the first uh, beer we did with them is called D up. Um, it's a, it's a Kolsch and lime. Um, and that was the first beer to be in the stadium and that was cool. And then they really wanted us to do, um, a beer for three, one, three day. Um, and they wanted to, they wanted to call it three, one, three IPA. Um, we had actually already been experimenting with, uh, a hazy that we could sell at a more affordable price point. Um, it's really hard to do with the amount of hops that we put in our beer, especially on the Ferndale project side. Um, so, um, but over the last two years, all the experimenting that um, Rex and team have done, we've started to figure out what hops can work well that are at a lower price point. And the really cool thing is they're often Michigan hops. Um, so we moved forward with making a all Michigan hopped uh, New England IPA um, for 313. Truthfully, we're lucky if we're breaking even based on the price point. Um, but um, we're able to, to make a beer that, um, that we're excited about, that tastes good, um, and, and hopefully um, the masses will like as well. I just, I just found out that uh, last week was the first week ever that Elephant Juice wasn't our uh, highest selling beer through self-distribution. It was 313. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the price point, but it's also a great beer and it has a very cool can. And I think the Pistons partnership is part of that. So it'll be interesting to see if that if that continues or it's a flash because um, it came out recently. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, quick follow up: um, you, since you already had mentioned that it's already at LCA to some degree already, um, is this the potential of maybe trying to get a second team? that plays at LCA, maybe the Red Wings. I'm not going <laughs> to worry about the Pistons or the, the, the Lions because apparently they're, they're, you're not on their good <laughs> side by the sound of it. Um, is another Detroit sports team on the, uh, on the, uh, in the uh, works at all? Or is it a dream or am I just making stuff up? Uh, probably making stuff up. I'm a huge Wings fan. Um, I've, the only tickets I've ever owned are uh, Wings tickets. Um, uh, but um, it's, it's crazy when you're working with these, um, with these sports teams in the, in the stadiums and how complex it is. Um, you could either have a relationship with a sports team like the Pistons or the Red Wings, 
you could have a relationship with Olympia that actually owns the building. So when you see the Goose Island bar, when you go to a game, they actually have a relationship with Olympia um, and not the Pistons or Red Wings. And then you have a concession company that actually runs all the concessions. Ultimately, the concession company is who decides what product is in there. Um, so often you will see that Bells and Founders, for example, have a relationship with them, which is why you see so much of that beer or, or some of the bigger breweries as well, AB InBev breweries. Um, so we've learned a lot over the past year of just kind of uh, just managing all those different relationships. Um, but unfortunately, we would have to have a relationship with the Pistons and the Red Wings if we wanted to do beers with both. And those relationships do, they are costly. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, change of pace. Um, apparently, uh, there's a notice at the building that you guys don't do flights on Saturdays at Ferndale Project. <laughs> Now, it's a little unusual, at least in my opinion, it's a little unusual that you're saying, no, we're not, we don't do flights on this day. What's the reasoning for no flights on Saturday nights? Uh, do you see this as a trend or do you, do you guys see something specifically with Ferndale Project that, that you see as, as a benefit uh, that you guys can use in your favor uh, to run your business? Why, why, or, or is this just, you know what, we, it's just too much trouble. We just don't want to deal with the flights on Saturdays. It's a busy day. Why, why no flights on Saturdays? Yeah, I mean, it's more the latter. It's really putting um, our customer experience team first. Um, we knew that when we were opening, we would be really busy. Um, so it actually started with no flights. And then it said no flights on weekends. And now it says flights on Saturdays. And the hope is eventually we can get to flights, but um, on Saturdays at times we have a pretty long line um, and we saw that flights add pretty significant time to that. Um, but I love the ability to offer flights um, purely from a business standpoint. They have a great margin um, and they allow people to try a plethora of beers. So we'd love to get to the point where we offer flights, um, across the board. That was, that's more kind of tied to our opening and just our business levels. Um, and I'll also say that, um, our staff had the ability to, uh, ignore that rule. So my hope is that, um, if you're there on a Saturday and it's not busy, um, they would be willing to still offer a flight, but it's much easier to, for, for me, and the sign say no flights and then the staff be the, be the good, the, the good guys, as opposed to uh, um, we saying we offer flights and then the staff have to say, we're too busy. Sorry. Out of curiosity, any pushback from, from that decision on Saturdays or has it been, have the, have the uh, customers been uh, well, well receiving of, of the, of the message? I haven't, I've heard that people have asked and uh, I haven't heard of anyone that's been like particularly upset. I will say that um, everyone has been really wonderful from a customer standpoint, these first couple of weeks um, on St. Patrick's day in particular, mainly driven by the weather and our patio. I mean, we had the longest line I've ever seen um, us have, I was really worried. I was busting. I, we have a run club. I did run club and then I got back and I was wearing like a tank top and shorts and I was busting tables um, and I was like freaking out because of how long the line was. And um, everyone was just super nice and kind from a customer standpoint. And one thing that I found is most important to be just upfront and have that information up there. The last thing you want to do is show up and, and get there and try to order a flight. It's not available. But so far, people um, seem to be OK with it. But there's definitely people that want flights. I mean, you're, you're not going to make everyone happy. Um, there's people that want their bourbon barrel age peanut butter volcano stout and a pint um and we have to say yeah we can't do <laughs> <laughs> well rob tell us how you're really at, at all times i want that shit on tap all year long with the cookie <laughs> on the side make that shit happen oh <laughs> oh sound like a brewer everything in pints <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe, uh, Ken, I'm turning it over to you now. All right. Thank you so much. So um, I'm uh, really excited because this is going to be the first time that we ever had Rex on the show. Rex, I did a little bit of digging in your history, saw that you worked for Holmes. Um, what has your 
lineage and transition been like to tell me uh you know a, a one minute brief history of rex how you got into the brewing business and um how it brought you to ferndale project eastern market yeah uh absolutely um uh, honestly um i just think i'm very fortunate and grateful and a little bit lucky um i've only lived in michigan for the past five years i'm originally from phoenix arizona um and one day I was like, all right, I want to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, and then I got into Central Michigan for their brewing program. I ended up moving to Michigan to attend said program. Um, and then the Holmes Brewery was opening in Ann Arbor, which I got hired at. And then I just worked from cleaning kegs up to the brew deck and eventually felt like I needed to keep challenging myself myself to another role in the brewing business. And luckily Ferndale Project was hiring, looking for a brewer. And I applied, got the job. And then I worked my way from just cleaning kegs to the brew deck. And all I want to do is just make beer. Well, you mentioned you went to Central Michigan. If I'm not mistaken, Eric, you went to GRCC? I went to CMU. I, for for oh, I, I did not. I, did. I went to the no. I did. I went to school for uh, music education. I wanted to be a music teacher. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, I didn't go to brewing school. That that means that uh, there is a website out there uh, that is lying, um, and uh, that makes me look bad that I didn't check it up before I called it out. But Wendy, <laughs> <laughs> I know you had a question. <laughs> No, I didn't go to GRCC, no. Wendy, oh, we might have uh, lost Wendy. I think we, we might have lost Wendy. That's all right. She is frozen. <laughs> the, the time and age that we live in, we think we'd get good internet. Oh, my gosh. It is a crazy day today. Nobody's internet is wanting to work well. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to pass it over to, to Rob real quick while I try to manage the video. All right. Um, so uh, one question that that I had, it's just just kind of thinking about, um, you know, the the going to the facility and getting getting broke and, you know, in a time where, you know, you're in the midst of the pandemic. And, and actually, you know, what, the, the one thing I wanted to ask about was really with the investment uh, plan that you guys went into with with doing uh, getting the community to invest into uh, Ferndale Project and Eastern Market, and I guess talk to us about what it was like, you know, putting that plan out and just kind of saying, okay, um, you know, we're expecting fifty thousand to two hundred fifty thousand, and then suddenly within a week, you're three quarters of the way to the absolute goal of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That that. That's just, that has to be just like ridiculousness. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, 2020 looking back was just filled with uncertainty. Um, and for us, we had no idea what 2021 would be like. Would things be back to normal? Would mm -hmm. they be worse? Um, and so with that uncertainty in mind, um, we thought it was important that we, um, we, have some some money set aside so that we we continue to survive. Um, I feel super lucky just with the fact that we were able to um, maintain all our staff and not lay anyone off in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people talk about how unlucky it was to open Ferndale Project a couple of weeks before the pandemic, um, but it was a, a bit of a blessing because we were slammed those two weeks. Um, so we were able to put a, a little bit of a cushion in place and then, and then the team responded and we launched a bunch of things that kept us afloat. Um, and one thing about just kind of the way that we operate, and really I think beer in general is January is always your slowest month and February is your slowest month. And without knowing what was gonna happen, um, we knew that we, we, would, we would potentially need some investment and I'd rather ask for it um, before things were dire. Um, but the way to your point that the community responded was, was amazing and really, I think that's that's been the case since our opening of both locations. Um, Ferndale, in particular, um, they lost a brewery that I think they, they that was they enjoyed. I mean, it's pretty pretty cool 
live in a neighborhood and be able to walk to a brewery. And Axel and Livernoy Tap was very much that. And so when they closed, it was heartbreaking for, for the folks there. Um, and then when we announced we were coming, everyone was like, we're going to help these guys. And then the pandemic hit and they're like, we're not losing another brewery. So it was cool to see everyone come out and support us um, when that happened. And the same thing when we were looking for investment. And the other part of it was like, we could talk to a bank. Um, um, but at the end of the day, I'd rather give that return to people that believe in us and have faith in us and our customers, as opposed to um, giving it to a bank. Um, so it was awesome to see everyone respond. And every quarter we cut a check. Um, and it's, it's the interest, honestly, is much higher than we would have paid a bank, but it feels good to be giving to someone who believed in us and, and really Ferndale came out, but we also got people from like all over. It was pretty cool to see like people believed in, they either had family that lived nearby, um, or they had visited. And so we got a lot of people that came out and supported us that way. And that's one of the few checks that I feel good every t- every quarter sending out. I'm like, this is very much deserved. Right. And I'm not sure about anyone else, but Danny and I really enjoyed those checks. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Like you have to do, I think it was a hundred dollar minimum. And I was like, before we released it, I was like, I'm going to test this thing. Um, so I was the first one at a hundred. Mm-hmm. Every quarter I get like seven cents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, we we get it. But all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it back to Ken here. <laughs> all right, uh, if you can believe it or not, we have been chatting for about 50 minutes now. It has been great to catch up and learn a little bit more about what's going on with Ferndale Project. Um, as we end the show, uh, we all decide to ask a final question of you guys, give you guys a little bit of a chance to do some promotion or potentially, you know, answer some fun stuff. Now I have a question because I have a, uh, a bone to pick with Dane here. Um, because the last time I saw Dane, um, he literally kicked my ass in bags. Um, it was the ugliest performance I've ever had and it didn't help that I believe it was either three or four turns and not like three or four each. Like I threw, I was with Matt Bush, Matt threw, I threw, Matt threw, and we lost. That was it. And I, I need to know, um, are you still that good? And, uh, when can I get my revenge? So the first thing I'll say is it's not, you can, it's Matt, uh, going into that, you know, Matt's going to be talking smack. So I was like, I need to end this quick or I'm going to be hearing from Matt all evening. Um, so I had, I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of uh, adrenaline and momentum. I felt like I needed it. I'm down to play whenever. Uh, I will say, I think we just busted the bag sets back out at Eastern market um, with the good weather. Um, but um, I'm not sure if I'm that good anymore. I haven't really played since probably that time. We've had a couple staff events where I know they were busted out and I think I lost both times. Um, we just did an event at Fulling Warehouse up in Grand Rapids, and uh, I also lost there. So I don't know. Now might be your time. I'm kind of licking my wounds. Well, I'll I'll leave this question open for uh, uh, Rex and Eric. What game do you think – drinking game. Uh, so not necessarily like drinking like beer pong, but either – it could be beer pong, but games you play while you drink or games you play to drink. Uh, what do you think you could beat the entirety of Eastern Market Brewing Ferndale Project staff? What is your game? We'll start with Rex. They're both going to say lager drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will have a lager in hand while we do this for sure. Um, I don't know. Uh, since uh, that Pistons collab, I think we're all like on the basketball like basketball train. Like I, I think I could beat anybody on the brew staff in a game of pig. Okay, I think that's the first time somebody's brought that up. What about you, Eric? Yeah, mine's kind of unique. I would say like hammer schlagen or stein hoisting. I think those are those are probably my two strongest like beer related drinking games. Um, I, yeah, I don't think I've played hammer schlagen in five years, and I kind of now I want to you know get a hammer and a nail and. And see if I can still do it. Um, well, what about you, Dane? I'll let you. I'll let you answer. Do you obviously bags is not your game anymore? What what game do you think you could beat the rest of the crew in? That's huh. related to beer drinking. I don't know. Honestly, I don't drink that much beer anymore. Uh, well, you know, ba- bags isn't necessarily. It's related to beer drinking because usually people drink while playing. So yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I got to think about that. I don't think there's anything. Um, I used to play a lot of soccer, uh, and, uh, and kickball, kickball is a game that I do feel like I excel at. I haven't done it in a while. Um, but I don't think I've ever played kickball sober. Um, so I think I might throw kickball out there. I I have a friend that tries to get groups of people to play slosh ball, which is kickball, but everyone has like a solo cup in hand at all times. Mm. So, uh, but Rob, what's your final question for the crew? All right. So it's going to be two questions, one for Dane, one for, for Rex and Eric. So I'll start with the, the one for Rex and Eric. I, I'm curious, favorite musical artist or band to listen to while brewing. <laughs> and the one for, for Dane, I'm going to take straight out of the chat from one Miss Dina Policicchio. Who is the your favorite and your best trivia host ever? <laughs> I, I'm laughing because these guys were listening to some wild music. When was that? Was that <laughs> yesterday? The day before? I mean, we we listen to a lot. Like it's it's a good mix throughout the week. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's eclectic. It's everything. Yeah, like I mean, from jam bands to like some some weird like weird stuff, like weird electronic. Like we were listening to like Deep House yesterday. It was great. Um, but like I mean. House. I, Oh, it's so good. Um, it's just like every person in, in the brewery like has their one style of music and whenever it goes on, we all just like vibe to it. It's great. Yeah. Um, but but I guess uh, if I have to answer the question, um, I'm just going to say uh, a band called Wolves in the Throne Room. You can look them up. Uh, it's just, you know, some weird black metal, but that's cool. The beers seem to enjoy it. Uh, and then... <laughs> And, and then uh, my favorite trivia host is obviously Robert. So, <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> Eric, I'm curious. Yeah. I haven't heard your music. Yeah, you know, I get down with some Bach. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I like Bach, <laughs> but not when I'm brewing. Um, no, man, it really it depends. Like people are seasonal drinkers. I'm definitely a seasonal like brew deck like playlist type person. Uh, if I'm feeling like hip hop, I listen to a lot of like Javon and Lido. Um, I love Tribe Called Quest. Um, yes. If I'm feeling more of like the upbeat kind of like energetic stuff, I'm a huge fan of like melodic 90s skate punk, which is like literally the Tony Hawk soundtrack is like my shit. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the shit right there. <laughs> so I get down. Love with that, that soundtrack. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like it all, man. I really do. I, I, you know, I, I get down with some R&B, too. Like Silk Sonic right now is definitely on repeat. Um, yeah, I like it all. You'll fit in well then, Eric. There's a little bit of everything. <laughs> I do need to upgrade the sound system at Royal Oak or at least figure out how to get it moving. Ferndale has an awesome one. Um, and Eastern Market, the brewery is just tap rooms. It's whatever they're listening to. Um, but Royal Oak needs an upgrade for sure. I think it's like Alex Sebastian's like personal speaker right now. <laughs> well, Robert, I don't know if Angela reached out. I asked her to. Uh, we do need a trivia post at Ferndale Project. So I have heard. Uh, that will that will have to be a, a talk in progress with my wife because hosting two nights in a row is probably problematic for the household. So we will we will see if if ever there is a universe where breweries are open on Mondays, um, I would without a doubt be the guy. <laughs> so Monday would be your day. Monday would be. That's just what I told Angela was Monday would be my day doing right. Tuesday is a little. Eh. All right. We'll think about it. Okay. We're open. Uh, the cafe is open in the mornings on Monday. So we're kind of dabbling. I don't know if I could do trivia in the morning. Well, no, no, no. We got to open later. <laughs> we got we to gotta have more coffee. There's got to be more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what's your final question for these fine young gentlemen? All right. I had to create. I'm gonna create. I had to create one here because I wanted to see how low everyone is gonna go here with this one. I'm gonna, and all three of you have to give me your own unique answer. I'm gonna rattle four beers, and you have to give me your top. You know, from one to four, the one that you will drink all the time to the number four you won't drink at all, and you all have to answer. And those four beers are 
Natty Ice or Natty Light. So I'll give you a choice. Natty Ice or Natty Light, Hams, Keystone, or Milwaukee's Best. In order, one being that you'll drink it all the time and four that you won't even touch the stuff. What are your unique answers? Okay, I'll, Dane, this, I'll, I'll this, start with you, Dane. No, let's let the country also boys include, go first. <laughs> what, what does this that? also include... Or is it, he's going to let the crispy go, boys go first, but I was going to ask, is there the stipulation that Keystone is possibly going to cost more now? Uh, no, uh. no, <laughs> we won't, we won't have that in there, but I'm sure we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Our game will start with you. All right. It's Hams, Keystone, Natty, uh, and the Beast. Natty's Milwaukee's best. Oh man, and what would I ha- if I had to drink them all the time? <laughs> I mean, ah. so I, I went to Northwestern in Chicago, um, outside Chicago in Evanston. Um, we we I'd say of those beers, probably drank Milwaukee's best the most, um, <laughs> and Keystone as well. Um, those t- those were the top two. <sighs> ah man, I don't know. I'd say. <laughs> All the time, I'd probably go Keystone. Um, Keystone. Uh, Hams is a hard one because I feel like it might be what I enjoy the most, but I don't know if I want to be drinking it all the time. Um, <laughs> it tastes like water, uh, so I'd go. I'd go Keystone. Um, Milwaukee's best, just because of the memories. Um, probably Hams. Um, and what was last? What was no, the other- nat- Natty Ice. Yeah, Natty Ice would definitely be last. All right, there we go. Rex, let's go to you next. What are your what's what's your four in in order from best to worst that you would drink? Uh, I mean, number one obviously is Natty Ice. I mean, come on, I mean, <laughs> there, there's no, nothing better than a Natty Ice, right? <laughs> um, but uh, no, uh, it's just going to be hams, and then everything else is number four. None of the above. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Eric, let's go with you. What do you got? Yeah, this was like the easiest question of the night for me. Uh, <laughs> it's obviously hams is number one. I could drink that all day, every day. I love that beer. Uh, Great answer. Uh, probably Milwaukee's after that, Keystone, and then Natty. Um, but if I had to make my own list, and I'll just throw this out there, I got an old style tattoo. I'm a Chicago boy at heart. Old style's number one. Ham's Light would be number two. Oh. And then Stroh's, and then probably Milwaukee's best. In, in my oh, oh, oh. No, all right. No, Natty Bo. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. Or how do I? How do I mute you? Delete you off this podcast? Uh, we're going to say running. the Stro. The Stroh's. Is it the Blue Can Stroh's or the Bohemian Stroh's? Yeah. So this is new to me because I've never had Bohemian. I've never they had. Sell, it. Do they sell that anymore, guys? No, I, I think they, they stopped making it. They stopped making it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've only had the blue one. That's like the best one. Like Stroh's Lager or something. Yeah, Stroh's Lager is like, was king. Like in college, at least. So, so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Danny, what's your final question for these gentlemen? Um, Mine's more of like an opinion observation. So um, I've been to Rogue a lot of times. Um, great food. Okay, beer back in the day. But... Um, did it ever make you feel like you were in like the lair of a supervillain when you were in there? <laughs> All of, yeah, right. Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Why yeah. is that so okay. true? What was it? <laughs> yeah, uh, I can tell stories. Uh, you kind of cut out. You're talking about Roke, you're talking about Roke right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, I got nervous because I didn't hear the the brewery and I heard good food. Okay, beer. I was like. I hope she's not talking about us. Uh, but no, Roke, 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 Roke. Um, so it's funny. Everything went on auction. And then a number of things didn't get purchased on auction. Um, and, and Roke reached out to us directly trying to negotiate if we would buy the bar that was cemented into the ground. Um, the huge chandeliers. Um, and then the um, purple curtain. Um Somehow someone actually did buy those chandeliers. Um, are still there, and the purple curtain is still there. I learned that 
curtain is probably is, is very expensive. Um, mm -hmm. I actually offered to pay money to, for someone to take it away, um, but they wouldn't do it. Um, so we are going to find, we're going to find something to do um, with that purple curtain. Um, Shane, who does all our packaging, um, he's asked for a few strips of fabric. Um, I don't know why Shane's always up to something. So we're going to let him, we're going to let him take it and see what he comes up with. Okay. Godspeed. Yeah. Right that now, place the is an office. Uh, so a uh, kind of administrative team is working in the tap room and they're getting that vibe right now. So you might see some changes in our can designs. <laughs> and that place was just straight up like if Lex Luthor bought a bar and tried to turn it into a comedy club. Yes. <laughs> just looks so damn weird. Weird. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've got nothing but love for the Johns over there at Roke. They, uh, you could tell what with what Danny said, it made a lot of sense after our podcast with them because they definitely have that like very interesting vibe to them, but. Uh, you know, getting to know them and having those conversations, they are just hysterical people um, who who had a great dream to build a brewery. And I mean, they're still they're still crushing it over in Marshall. Um, and I think that was the best decision for every every person in this. You guys buying the building, them buying Dark Horse, Dark Horse being bought. I think everyone is winning this. Um, so that's going to do it here for Better on Draft podcast, the Michigan series. Uh, stay tuned. If you're listening live. Um, we're going to go offline, come back. We actually got, uh, untapped coming on here, um, for a special half episode, uh, following to talk about, uh, beers without beards, the upcoming festival in Portland, Maine. Um, so we'll be there. Eastern market will be there. Awesome. That's going to yeah, do it yeah. for the podcast. Go check them out. They are in Eastern market and Ferndale. That's eight in Livernois or Livernois between eight, and nine miles. So don't go walking around downtown and uh, saying like, where are you guys? You gotta, you gotta either take the nice long walk or uh, take the drive down Livernois. Uh, but that's going to do it folks. Thank you so much, Eric. Good luck on your new digs. Um, I hope to not see you in a year interviewing with another brewery here. I Third not. time's a charm. No, we're here. All <laughs> right. Well, no matter what you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. Have a good night. Peace.